figure OTC on an OMC I'd be A-OK. -okay. Not so. Ryan's Mobile One. This boat did not get winterized. This is a Ford motor. It's the 351 5.8 liter. You can see it there on the tag where it says 5.8 HO. It's a high output motor. So I rebuilt the carburetor. I've just gone through this whole stinking thing. Um, the oil cooler was blown apart. I did an Instagram post about that. But where that is, is underneath the motor mount. You see this is the motor mount right here. This cylinder right here is uh, the aforementioned. Uh, this end of it was blown off because it froze. I looked at it and I was like, man, it's not rusted. It's not that bad. And you look underneath it here, you can see there's freeze plugs that got blown out. You can see that one right there is a brassy one. Look at the little gap between right here and right here. It's so tiny and that's where you have to work in to get a freeze plug in. Doing freeze plugs on an engine that's pulled out can be a little tricky. There's the right tools for the job and if you have, it gives you more space. But trying to do it in a boat installed when you've just got that tiny little thing, you notice that the engine mounts are threaded and the reason for that is so that you can adjust it up and down so that you can get your drive shaft through the gimbal bearing in the transom. I know I'm starting to speak a foreign language here but basically you got to pull the whole engine and in order to pull the whole, to do the freeze plug to get the motor mount off, this motor mount it bolts to the engine block with the bolts coming up from the bottom so when you pull the boat motor, you pull that nut off the top and you pretty much pull it straight up and out. What a ton of work because you got to pull the out drive first. Because like I say, there's a shaft on the back side going through the gimbal bearing. See that orange cap down there? Anyway, the shaft goes through this. And so it's a whole bunch of tricky. At least there's no air conditioning, but there's power steering, all this other stuff that you have to worry about. And then just the body work of a boat. Basically just pull the whole boat apart to get the engine out. It's a huge pain to do for just a freeze plug. So for that special tool that I made to prevent having to do that on both sides, pretty freaking cool. I saved a ton of time. Let's get down in there upside down. I'll show it. So I'm going to flip this all upside down. This is where I'm working. If you get down in there, you can see there's just that little gap, and that's where the freeze plug is. That's why it's so hard using the OTC kit to get it in there. I figure OTC on an OMC, I'd be A-OK. -okay. Not so. We get over here, you can see that one. It's just kind of a mirror image. You can see that's the bolt right there that goes in from the bottom side to secure the mount. So it's not like you can support the motor, hang the motor and pull the mount very easily. There's a lot of tear down involved. There's the bolt for the mount on the other side. You can see the, the nut and the adjustability to make sure that your shaft's lined up perfectly straight through the gimbal bearing. So I'm having the hardest time getting this stupid freeze plug in. So I bought an OTC Stinger set and uh, it's a freeze plug driving kit. It's like a front wheel hub bearing press where it's got all these kind of uh, tools and then it's got a round ball on a rod that you can knock them in with. But the problem is I don't have the access to make this work. And you can see where I've scratched the tool up against the motor mount on this boat. I don't want to pull the out drive to pull the motor, to pull the motor mounts off to put a freeze plug in when they're not all rusted and you don't need to do all of them. I just have two of them that I need to put back in. Had this one back in and I knocked it back out. I don't know what the crap I was thinking but I did that. So at this point, uh, what I'm doing is this is the driver for the freeze plug. It's inch and a half. You can see it doesn't fit in all the way and this stands off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I found some washers, some big heavy washers that fit perfectly. And if you stack two of these suckers together and then take this one and then put it on the back side, that acts as a stop so you can knock it in, use the motor mount in a pry bar and pry this into place and then be able to extract this at the end knock on wood. So that's the plan. That's what I want to do with this. I've checked it with the uh, uh, micrometer. It's in good shape. I can't find these. That's the other problem. I can find steel ones that are close. Uh, you see it's just right at inch and a half. It's like dead nuts on. And if you spin it, it spins without it being out around or any kind of problem. 
So the freeze plug's good, it just got pushed out. Never use freeze plugs. I hate showing how to do this kind of stuff, but sometimes you're in a pinch where you just can't find the right thing. You want to get the boat done, get it in the water, get the use. Summer's almost over. Uh, I actually had this, like I say, holding and then I knocked it out to put in a new one. And the new ones are too big. They're too deep and too big and there's no way to get them in. And then I don't want to grind this up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to weld uh, let's see which one's tighter. I think this one would come off better. So I'm going to weld this one to this one first of all through the middle, through the center. And then once those are welded together I'm going to stack this one on, get them exactly perfect and then weld in the inside, fill that in and uh, make my own driving tool that will fit in there given that this one is just too stinking high. And rather than destroy this one, make one that fits. That's the plan see how well I can execute it. If you don't have a tool you need, if nobody makes it, you make it. Luke, I am your father. And uh, that turned out pretty good. That's stage one where I got the two well together. Let's grind that flat right there and uh, stack the other one. That's pretty flat. And kind of colorful. All right, so I've got her tacked together. See how this goes on there. It doesn't bind, it seems like they're okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest. So it's welded, it's all filled in. Now I just need to buzz that flat. I don't think it'll matter because these are convex. Concave, these are concave on this side, convex on this side. So anyway, I don't think it'll touch. I'm just gonna do it anyway, or not. That's what we're going for, but without all the stuff on the back that makes it so that I don't have access. So this is going to go back in the kit without being destroyed. And then this is going to go here. Because I can't use the tool to interface with it anyway, the little ball and socket thing. That would be wonderful. Yeah, it's not going to happen. There's no way to get it to fit in there, even with the collar. Look at that. I'm proud of that. That looks good. Would you like to see the other side? The other side's even tougher because this uh, rail is in the way. But it's the same. So I had to do one on this side too. And I had to reuse the original one. See, those are the freeze plugs over here. I'm thinking, why couldn't it have been that one on the end where there's tons of room? But as it turns out, using that gap with a pry bar actually worked out, worked out to be a good thing. You see, I got it nice and flush and perfect. Just squeezed in that tiny little space. So the other trick with this, or sideways, that's a carburetor for reference, is you look down here, check that out. It overheated this, eh? And you got all these wires that are melted, that were melted into the exhaust here. Check out the starter wire, it was cooked on there too. I'm like, how did this thing not catch on fire and burn to the ground? So I got a little separation, but it, you see it was zip tied? Look at the plastic that transferred. That should have made a significant stink. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. There's the one side. Here's the other. I think how polished that is from hands. Look at this. Beautiful. Hey guys. Hey. There's the water. Hello. Hello. Wow. Looks like a person. That's intense. Gotcha. All that wood hanging. Okay. It's beautiful. Good, that's the end. 
That's not the end. That's just the technical section. Yeah. Here, take the camera. Are you hopping up there? Yeah. If anybody says, here, take my beer. Watch this. Yeah. Easy peasy. As long as you don't slip or slide, it's a hell of a ride. I don't show the sight on the patrol stuff very often. <laughs> People freak out. Yeah. You didn't freak out. Sweet. What do you mean, end of the ride? <laughs> it's like a one-up in a video game. Yeah. Not only am I not tall enough for that, I no. also am not flexible enough for that. <laughs> flexible is one thing I don't claim. I just claim to no coefficients of kinetic and static friction. Static in this case, and kinetic enough to know to stay away from the kinetic. Yeah. Thank you for filming. Want to film the down? Yeah. Just in case? Yep. I'm still going, so. Perfect. Thanks, Tim. No problem. I'm going to slow down a minute. Make sure I do this right. Plan it. Make sure you get in the right spot. Yeah, coming down is always a little harder. It's not bad. And you can always stop and rest if you want. This is the stuff you gotta worry about. Slick sandstone. Yeah. You think you got purchase on that, and it proves you wrong. It's stressful. Yeah, that would hurt coming down. What's that? If you uh, slipped and ended up. Fold in half. <laughs> yeah, I got this. They're good. I think I climbed up from this side. I think I'll just do the same. That's good enough for me. Sweet. There you go. Thank you.